flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. Today, we're talking a recap of Nashville, the ups, the downs, the in-betweens, as well as getting ready for Road America. And with me to do it, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's going on, Kyle? Yeah, Nashville was a freaking awesome race. Uh... I mean, it wasn't necessarily the greatest race on television, but it wound up being pretty profitable for us, especially for you, my friend, picking Chase Elliott to win at a nice little eight to one clip there. So yeah. we we wound up with a nice weekend. DK went well. The Toyotas absolutely showed out just like we thought. And uh, maybe maybe we've reversed our own jinx going forward. We'll see. Let's not put the cart before the horse, but yes, Nashville was <laughs> kind to us. Uh, we can definitely, we'll definitely recap our DK week, our week at the betting window, and then um, kind of overall thoughts. It, it, before we jump in, I, I guess I could just throw up it on the screen and we can kind of talk about it as we go. But I don't know that we've had a race play out quite as well as it did for in Nashville. We literally, we sat here on Wednesday or sa- Saturday, I guess. Saturday. Um, and we talked about it and we're like, okay, Kyle Bush is starting in the back. He should still be really fast. There's a reason why he's priced the way he is. So Hamlin will be the leader and then Truex can get in there kind of around stage two. It's actually a little bit sooner than that. And then Kyle yeah. Bush maybe around stage three and he was already fighting for the lead around stage two. So, um, the, the Toyotas were fast. JGR was fast. Um, we had a strong week. I think it could have been better as. If- Kyle Busch and Martin Truex pitted um, with about, what, six laps to go. That was such a weird sequence of events. It was. Um, like, it, it, it was befuddling to see those guys all pit, knowing there was such a limited amount of laps left, and that it was a little difficult for cars to pass because yeah. – I, I didn't understand the uh, those guys going down pit row. Myself. Yeah, I don't know if they thought Chase was gonna go and they try to dive behind him and then he did, and then you know when they see uh, when Truex go or who was in second Kyle Busch I don't know one of them went Bush. and then all of them come and then Chase just stays out it wins obviously the rain was a weird wrinkle and Truex yeah. dominates stage one stage two and then I. Thought when I added him to my card, I was looking like a genius because I was like, okay, perfect. He's going to win at 15. Um, and then, yeah, him and Kyle Bush and Denny Hamlin all go in and they all finish. And, um, you know, Hamlin gets sixth, Truex gets 22nd, Kyle Bush gets 21st. Um, both those guys were running towards the top three all day. So that was, that was frustrating, especially having a Truex top five bet, a, um, um, you know, a variety of options there, but I did hit some outrights. I did hit some head to heads. We'll recap the betting card, but uh, yeah, so here is our, our lineup we built on the show is actually pretty good. Bubba Wallace was actually really good for us. Um, he was strong all day, even when he's like kind of made dumb decisions or yep. was having issues with his car or got bumped, uh, was still able to, he had a really fast car, was able to rebound, do really well. Stenhouse never really gained the traction that I think we thought he could. Um, but he ended up finishing 16th and didn't absolutely murder hey. us. Hey, that nine place differential is huge. Yep. yep. Um, and then obviously Kyle Bush, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex uh led basically 95% of the laps. <laughs> um, so having all of those guys in your lineups does not yeah. stick either. So uh, pretty solid week. I think we, you know, had Bush and Truex finished in the top five. Maybe we even have a little bit better of a week, but uh, 72 in the three max. Um, I will take that each and every week. And, um, you know, was it? I think it's uh, $4 in, $21 out. That's, a, that's an ROI I can live up with every single Definitely. day. Um, and then I also built uh, this bad boy. Um, which was pretty solid too. Ryan Blaney um, had a pretty solid week, um, not not too shabby. Also, Kurt Busch, that was a good call on your part. 
Um, I'm so sad that that Blaney couldn't get to the front, man. Yeah. Um, And then Keselowski, man. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why do you keep doing it to yourself? I don't know. He was doing good. Like, I felt like (laughs) I was on on the right track and he was running. And then all of a sudden, last couple laps, he's crashing and and going out. And honestly, I feel like his bad luck is starting to rub off on Chris Buescher, who he himself was running inside the top 10 all day. And then he has that bad luck tire fall off. And that's got to be. I don't understand. We went from a five lug nut setup to one big like screw or whatever you want to call it. And and you can't put the one on, but you could put the five on. Like, I don't know. I guess (laughs) it's a a pattern of like you know you're so used to doing one thing so now he'll be without his crew chief and one of the jackman and one of the tire guys and others even harder and it's just like he was looking good he was looking strong and he was great and that 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 five to one top 10 was looking money it was looking like the whole race yeah it was looking like we would have we're very live to cash that so uh, very, very frustrating week, but, um, you know, solid on DraftKings. I'm not going to complain. Um, you know, 21 in 50 something out. I'm happy to do that. Uh, flip over to our bet tracker. Obviously, as we, as Brian mentioned, I had the chase Elliott eight to one hit that very nice day. Um, you know, had, had a few had Christopher bell had Martin Truex, Cut off my uh, outright exposure there, and I was really happy to do that. You know, only three. Um, I think I'm going to try and keep it at two or three every week at the most um, and see how this goes. Obviously, hitting a winner makes the rest of the card look much, much better, but yeah, happy oh, to yeah. do it. Uh, so Truex obviously didn't win, um, but he should have performed better. Uh, we, As you, Brian, mentioned, the Busher top 10. That was looking live to win until it wasn't. Stenhouse never really gained the traction that we thought. Uh, Chase Elliott got me the top five, obviously, based on the win. Christopher Bell, I thought he was going to get there, and then he wasn't there. And then he was so he was so up and down. Like he's been yep. he's been somebody all week. Best bet Hamlin over Logano had that. That was nice. Um, felt good about that. Alex Bowman, like poor <laughs> poor Alex Bowman, man. Corey LaJoy like had him on fire early and he was just out of it. Yeah. Um, Suarez looked really good. Um, this, this is a guy that is clearly taking strides. So, you know, it's, Alma, it's Alma that Roy- track house team in general, man. Yeah. They, they are driving like a top echelon team, not a second year uh, NASCAR team. Yep. It, it's kind of, it's kind of amazing to see how well they've performed. Yeah. And then obviously Elliott over Chastain as he won, getting plus money on that. I was really happy to do that. Uh, Kurt Busch ended up finishing second, which the whole like last part kind of screwed that. Um, ditto for Truex versus Logano. Um, but I did have Harvick over Briscoe, who went out early, and the Christopher Bell top 10. It's minus 140, but my God, um, they're going to keep giving it to us. I'm going to keep yep. lining up and taking it. We're gonna we're gonna continue to bet that until the the number adjusts itself. I mean, I think he's top ten now in like eight of ten races or something yep. something ridiculous. Um, strong week for you. Obviously, you had the Bell top ten. You had the Kurt Busch top ten. You could have gone even top five or top three and, and cashed yeah. that. Uh, Bush over Harvick was a good call on your part. Austin Dillon, another guy that he just he didn't quite have it. He it was kind of like Stenhouse. But it's a good number, and I think it's a bet that if we were doing this again this week, I think we'd probably line up and consider it again. Uh, Blaney over Hamlin was nice, nice call on your part, and then obviously Kyle Busch. Uh, again, oh, the Kyle last... Busch over Kyle Larson should have happened. Kyle Larson it should have happened. You know, we should talk about him a little bit, just in general. Like he's still being priced like he's like last year's driver, and, and he's nowhere near that. He's just not that guy, and it's a new car. Yeah. I think the new car is actually affecting him a lot more than I assumed it would, which is kind of insane. So really I strong like, week for the two of us. Yeah. Um, both of us had plus plus units. I, I was over eight units. You were over three units in the green. Um, both very, very strong. So I can't wait to see how we set our money on fire this week. 
Um, but we're here. We're going to do it. And we're going to take a look at the odds for the race. Uh, Chase Elliott is your favorite. And part of me wants to go back to the well uh, with him. He's been great on road courses. He's been great. Um, and I'm going to say Circuit of America instead of Road America. I know I'm going to do it. So I'm just putting it out there. If I know if I say Circuit of America, not Road America, uh, I know what I'm talking about. I'm just, you know, we're, we're processing a lot over here. So I mean, Chase Elliott is difference. Your... It's both a road course that has America in the title. Yep. I mean. yep. And, uh, you know, for Road America, it's a lot closer to the Circuit of America, which even makes it more confusing a lot more flat a lot flatter not going to have the the peaks and valleys of sonoma um but obviously a lot of similarities with the the road course style uh, of the track so chase elliott is your favorite kyle larson is number two obviously a solid road course guy um, but as we mentioned just this kind of nah. uh ross chastain really compelling option this week i think eight and a half eight to one uh we've talked about track house the speed they've shown at all the road courses this year um, is elite and has been among the best. Um, they've been one of the most consistent teams. Even the broadcast on Sunday was talking about the track house consistency where a lot of teams like JGR and yeah. even Hendrick are having up spike weeks and down weeks and kind of, you know, all over. And, um, you know, track house is just punching out those top fives, top tens, consistently strong, consistently looking good. Um, and then Kyle Bush, you know, kind of rounds out that top 10. You can actually supposedly get a 13 to one on him. If you can get that, I think that's a smash. But uh, for the purposes of the show, we only use DraftKings, FanDuel, MGM and points bet for this little intro chunk. Brian, where is your head at and potentially your betting dollars? Well, I mean, getting Chase Elliott at five to one um, is not a bad number considering he's won seven road course races in the 21 Cup Series yeah. road races that he's ran. I mean, that's a 33% pop, which is unheard of yeah. in this sport. So, I mean, getting him at, at five to one is a good number. But for me, I feel like the, of these top guys, uh, Ross Chastain at eight and a half to one is a fantastic number knowing he won at Coda earlier this yep. year. And like you said, track house, Daniel Suarez won the other road course race at Sonoma just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, that just goes to show you how strong this team has performed this year at those tracks. Uh, I think we're going to see it again. Chastain is continuously running inside the top five. So getting him at that number, the third longest odds is, is a great value uh, as we speak right now. Yep. Um, I'm pulling up another tab to start tracking some bets, but I am going to, man, like you said, Elliot at five, five and a half, I think is amazing. Um, oddly I'm skipping Larson. I don't think I'm going to go there, which probably means this will be the week where he pops. Um, but I think I'm going to start my outright card with Kyle Bush. Ooh, um, I like that. I think he is running extremely well. Even last week where, you know, obviously things went to went to shit for him. Um, he was running really well, running near the front. Obviously had a really strong week in Sonoma, won Sonoma uh, in the truck race. Uh, obviously a really good road course driver. Um, there is some talk about him and, and kind of his contract situation. Do you Do you factor that in at all with him? Um, or are we overthinking it with uh, with with that contract? Because he he's even if he doesn't stay where he is, he's going to get a D like he's going to be behind the wheel somewhere next year. Right. Yeah, I I think a guy that's as veteran as Kyle Bush, I I don't I don't factor any sort of contractual stuff very much into um, going into a race day. Just knowing because this guy's been doing it for so long. He's still one of the best in the sport. So I don't think he's worried at all about where he's driving next year. And yeah. so it, it, that's not a worry to me whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and at circuit of America, he did, he started 15th, ended up 28th, but uh, was running really strong, including second in the stage two. So, um, you know, I believe there was an accident or, or something that happened there that kind of sent him towards the back. I forget. It's also uh, interesting to note too that uh, Kyle Busch he he won last year's Xfinity race at this track, so um, he got yeah. a little bit of extra practice 
last year. So he's kind of one of the the cup drivers that has performed a little bit better here, I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah. And for me, this four these four drivers are all very much in a similar bucket. I think they all have elite levels and uh can win any race. So um I'm taking the one that's in the double digits and gonna ride with that. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Head down to Martin Truex, another guy that is a compelling option. Um, obviously yeah. has a ton of success on road courses, um, has been running really, really well. Um, there is some question marks, though, um, and I believe it was Nick Giffen tweeting it out today. Um, I am going to look that up. But while I do that, just talk to me about um, about your expectations for kind of this group with Truex and Blaney and Hamlin and and uh, Dinger the Ringer. Yeah, I mean, uh, Almondinger is always a guy you have to keep your eye on at road courses. I mean, getting that 18 to 1 number with him being 12 to 1 at Ben MGM uh, is kind of a situation where you're betting a number as opposed to a driver. That That's that's a huge difference there. So I think a small no. wager on him would make a lot of sense. And then Martin Truex Jr., like you said, um, we could have just as easily been talking about him coming off of a victory in Nashville heading into this weekend. And Truex, for what it's worth, prior to last year, was kind of battling with Chase Elliott for as far as the top road racer in the Cup Series. And I don't think he's fallen off that much. So getting him at that 12-1 to 1 spot is pretty good. And then also Denny Hamlin at that same number. Like, like we said, JGR looked fantastic last week. Maybe they figured something out over the bye week. And, you know, getting all of these guys at over double digits in a race where if you jump out to the lead, you could potentially stay there for the majority of the race is, is really good value. Yeah, so I found the stat I was looking for uh, per Nick Giffen in terms of the JGR cars. Um, so the best a JGR car has run on the road course this year is 12th in average green flag speed. So they've just not been great in green flag. Doesn't necessarily mean to fade them. Obviously, they're really good. Uh, but Hamlin uh, had you know a, a late set of fresh tires, which helped him at Sonoma. Um, kind of an interesting interesting little wrinkle there to something to think about um as we roll along um i'm gonna put daniel suarez on 18 to 1 uh, we talked track house we talked yeah. about his success at sonoma um you know I, i'm not sure like i love ross chastain i love the melon man but like in terms of what these cars could do and what their upside is, um, I'm not sure that Ross Chastain should be seven or eight to one, um, and Suarez should be eighteen to one. I think I think I think Suarez should be like, and I think he's probably priced a little more efficiently at MGM at uh, DK, where he's like kind of yeah. fourteen, fifteen. I think getting those extra points really is a, a difference maker. So uh, Suarez eighteen to one is also going on the card. Yeah, like, like we said, the track house team has been amazing at road courses, and Suarez has been running really well, pretty much at every track over the last <laughs> hand races. So, like you said, getting getting that extra. I mean, you're getting an extra like ten dollars to the dollar with the Suarez um, as mm -hmm. opposed to Chastain, so that's pretty good. And a, just a little bit of a other wrinkle, uh, Circa. Um, this is from Nick Giffen about 38 minutes ago. Um, obviously, we're recording this on a Wednesday. Uh, Suarez is 13 to 1 over there, so that Circa tends to be a little bit of um, like yeah, a sharper sharp. book. Yep. Um, so that kind of gives you like, so Elliot's, uh, just under five to one Chastain, seven to one Larson, Truex, Kyle Bush are out nine to one, which says a lot about Larson. Yeah. Um, Blaney Sindrick are on the 11 to one and then Suarez Ooh. is 13. So, um, which is kind of interesting as we kind of transfer, um, into another compelling range, Christopher Bell, 15, 16 to one. Uh, Sindrick, the aforementioned 15, 16 to one Logano, and then, you know, a big jump to Byron at 25 thoughts on this range. And I know Christopher Bell has had some success on these road courses, has shown some ability, um, kind of an interesting number there. Yeah. It, it's hard to get to Bell at that 14 or 15, just knowing that he's, he hasn't quite shown 
I guess just the the top end speed to get to the front of the pack. He's been more of like a maybe a three to eight type driver. So it, it's hard for me to get to him on these outrights anymore. Austin Sindrick, I think, has a good shot to pop at this track. But again, uh, just seeing the way that Penske has driven, it, they've been a roller coaster this season. I'd prefer to go more of like the placement bets with him, especially at that 15 or 14 to, uh, to yeah. one number. Yeah, I just I know how fast cindric has been um, on road courses, and it is it is a compelling option. But like you mentioned, it's probably a better idea to uh, to target in in head to heads, outrights, that kind of stuff, or head to heads and placements, not outrights. Um, any other drivers you want to take a peek at uh, in terms of outrights? So I, I think uh, you. Just past him, uh, Chase Briscoe. I think there's a compelling uh, argument to be made for him to be one of the potential like surprises of this weekend's race. He finished sixth here last year um, in his the last two Xfinity races at this track. He finished seventh and third, I believe. Um, so it he he's shown the ability to pop at road courses. Mm -hmm. uh, getting that thirty to one at points bet or even at Caesars, you can get that same number is yeah. not 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 bad. And then even the 25 to one is something I would entertain for like a quarter unit or even a half a unit. Yeah. I think 30 to one is fine. I think 25 you start to get, you know, five points may not seem like that much, but it really is when you're talking about, you know, elite levels. Like I, if, it, if we're getting to 25, like I think I might even jump up into this range and take a few shots, but um, he is a compelling option. And, I'll be curious to see both uh, like top five, top 10 type markets, as well as who he may be uh, head to head with um, yeah. this week. Uh, I'm trying to organize six tabs on my widescreen TV and it's or my widescreen monitor. It's just like, I will say too. So Kurt Busch <laughs> at 31 to one yeah. odds at FanDuel. Uh, he's been driving too well to just glance over him in terms of any kind of track at this moment. So, yeah. he, you know, if you have a few extra dollars and you're looking at a long shot, Kurt Busch has been driving as good as anybody mm -hmm. entering this Sunday. Yep. Yep. I, I am in agreement with you there. Um, should we flip over and look at some placements and see if we can't find some values? Yes. These are, our, these are my favorite things, especially early in the week. It doesn't look like, Action Network's figured its shit out. So we'll head over to DraftKings. We'll see what numbers they have. And then obviously, if we can find better numbers, we will shop it. Oh, look, they moved Christopher Bell to 175. So clearly, we're not um, not likely getting there. Uh, maybe he doesn't do well in qualifying, starts near the back, and then we get a better number on Saturday. But uh, yeah, like a lot of these guys are interesting options when you talk, when you talk top 10s. But yeah. Um, at minus 175. Briscoe, top 10, minus 115. That is pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm actually going to add that on there. I think he's a guy who he can he can get to that point um, yeah. in the race, and it, I I don't necessarily see him winning. I, I, I will add that 30 to 1 number for a quarter unit, but um, getting him at pretty close to even money to top 10 is pretty good. And then, I mean, just looking directly behind him too, Kurt Busch, even money again to yeah. top 10, which he's continuously doing. And then it's really interesting to see a guy like Tyler Reddick, who just a few races ago was, you know, up, up there in terms of like the top five to 10 guys to win a race. Yeah. He's now kind of faltered back into almost even money to top 10. So yeah. maybe there's some value there with getting back on him to potentially start another string of top 10s. Yeah. He and Briscoe are both interesting in that market is like guys that sometimes get overpriced based on what they've actually done, but yeah, be, be priced based on their upside. It, it makes a lot of sense. And then, um, you know, trying to, trying to find ways to get there is, is kind of interesting. Um, Uh, Alex Bowman at minus 115 is really interesting. Harvick, Chris Busher. Um, I am going to add one to my card. Um, I mentioned this to Brian uh, prior to uh, prior to starting. Let me find the tweet. Uh, I think I yep. Um, so 
This is for iFantasy Race. Uh, if you're not following them on Twitter, you're missing out on a lot of really good nuggets. Yeah, uh, so since Coda 2021, we're, we're taking out the Indy Road Course. Austin Dillon is 7 for 7 at road courses in terms of finishing between 10th and 15th with an average finish of 12.4, including 10th at Coda and 11th at Sonoma this year. He is 3 to 1 to top 10 this week. I will take a shot there um, and see if he can't fin- keep that trend going. And then, you know, if he could finish 9th or 10th, I think uh, I'll be really happy. So I will add a top 10 wager on him uh, at 3 to 1. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's kind of like the Chris Busher wager last week where yep. the price is, is odd considering there's recent success at these kinds of tracks. And Dylan is a guy who he's been avoiding trouble last weekend. He didn't quite get to the top 10, but he was running like right around there in between like 15 and 12. So he's, he's on the cusp and getting that three to one number is pretty good value. Yeah, and I could see him qualifying decently well. And then that number is like 175 or even 225. Yeah, um, and then I'm feeling good about getting a little bit of a a little bit of a line value. Um, you know, it's all about getting those good numbers, Brian. We always preach that. Um, any of these other numbers jumping out to you? I mean, the Harvick number, the Bowman number, the Briscoe number, like this kind of range. Kurt Busch at, I mean, here we go again. Kurt Busch at so, top ten. I will even say, money, uh, I'm adding it again. Yeah, so I'm I'm adding uh, both Briscoe and Reddick at minus 115 to top 10 for a unit each. Um, okay. They're Reddick in particular. He offers far too much of, like potential to even crack the top five at this track, even even potentially win to be priced at this mark. So to me, that's a steal. And then Briscoe, like I said, I love him, but the Kurt Busch at even money again to top 10. I still feel like the books are kind of underplaying how good he's actually been and how good the 2311 team has looked of late. So getting him at even money is a great number. Yeah. And uh, finished fourth here last year um, after starting, I was just looking at it after starting 16th. So obviously moved up. And in terms of average rating, uh, he was seventh um, or, or, or eighth. Um, you know, who was fourth on that list of average rating from last year? Um, Mr. Tyler Reddick who uh, had a strong race um, only behind Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch and Matt DiBenedetto. Benedetto. So oh that's my gosh. <laughs> kind of interesting. It's been interesting to see him in the truck series, not really having, I thought like yeah. having the, the success. Ryan Priest has actually looked really good, but truck series is just a little, little funsies on the Friday nights. Um, yeah, as far as like top tens go this week, uh, there's no like big number that's jumping out to me. I mean, yeah. Almirola hasn't top ten in God knows years. Yeah, I mean, if he was going to do it last week, was the week? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's not a guy I'd get to. I mean, I feel Bubba Wallace fifteen to one. Yeah, he's sucked at road courses, but you could tell he's he's upped his level of driving, even even with the most recent uh, conversation he had with his with his crew chief coming out where he's kind of down on himself. I mean, he's still yeah. performing amazing even through a bunch of issues that he's having with his car uh let's see what if we can find some where are the i'm guessing we don't have head-to-heads yet let's see what's in weekly special Uh, oh no they they have head-to-heads just under driver props oh good call all right uh kyle bush versus daniel suarez that is interesting um, I really like Kyle Bush this week, but getting plus money on Suarez, we've talked about how solid and consistent he's been. And if Kyle Bush loses a wheel or gets rear ended or whatever, um, getting plus 120 on him Ooh. is not a terrible price. I think I might do it just to hedge a little bit. Um, because even if he, you know, Suarez finishes first and Kyle Bush finishes second, I win that. Um, I win that bet. So give me plus one twenty. I will. I will take that. I've been, you know, books are going to keep giving us these plus numbers, even in situations where the, clearly the better driver is favored. Um, it should be, uh, you know, a little bit closer. So yeah, I will take that value. Uh, Blaney Truex is fine. I'd probably go Truex there, but don't love it. 
Um, this is interesting. Now, Chastain minus 125 versus Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush at plus 105. Do we come back and get Bush now um, against Chastain? We talked about the success of Trackhouse, how good Ross has been. Um, but I also like Kyle Bush to win the race. So I don't, maybe that's just a way, uh, a head to head to avoid. Yeah. It, I mean, honestly, I, it, as much as I love Ross Chastain this week, getting Kyle Bush in a mat in any matchup at over even money is, is great, is great value. Again, it's the same thing with the Daniel Suarez. Like anytime you get a driver matchup at, at more than even money, it's probably, I mean, obviously it's, it's, set that for for a particular reason but a guy that's as good as kyle bush no way should he ever be that that big of a dog in a matchup in a yeah one, and i one, feel one, like one. they got some early money on chastain who for good reason was interesting but like i could see this line moving back um and being much more like the true explaining line um come come saturday especially post qualifying truex versus hamlin uh blaney versus logano that seems like something that's up your alley um suarez versus the dinger blaney versus cindrick um, bell versus cindrick yeah that might be a good spot to if you like cindrick this week if you like his because he's been really fast on road courses um just you know having having some issues but you want to fade these two guys who have issues in the pits and have issues with their cars and have issues finishing the races as strong as they start. Um, I, I don't hate that. Uh, Kyle Larson being plus 115 against Chase Elliott is is definitely something. I, it just goes to show you the uh, what where Larson has fallen to. And but then, but I'm then actually Larson. adding those two right there. So I'm going to take Briscoe over Bowman at minus 110. And Chastain at even money over Kyle Larson. Uh, I'm going to add that. I love Chastain this week. All right, Brian, we're, we we found it. I'm taking that's, Alex that's... Bowman over uh, over Chase Briscoe. That will be our show bet. Uh, you got me last week. We'll have to update the uh, yes. the tracker. I think we're either even or like maybe one of us is up one head to head. It's been it's been a pretty. You started off really hot. I caught up and then, then you I won like five in a row or something yeah and then i think we're about even now maybe one of us is up one or two so um kind of interesting bell plus 100 versus hamlin um it really is interesting it doesn't feel like the head-to-heads are as consistent like if truex gets more money here they don't necessarily reflect that in his other head-to-heads yeah um so there is opportunity there if you think you can find an edge yeah, it's also too uh, to note the shop shop sports books because sometimes um, one guy will be getting more money on one sports book and then being bet against on another one, and there's yep. a good way to hedge particular matchups like that. Hundred uh, percent, shop it. Always shop it if you have access to multiple books. Look on multiple books, find the best numbers. Um, things like Action Network or Odds Checker tend to have really good uh, grids to kind of price co- price comparison. Um, and don't assume that because they're eight to one versus 10 to one in the outright market that the top five or top 10 market is going to reflect that because sometimes it doesn't. True. Um, so make sure you shop that. Um, if you are enjoying the show, make sure you smash the thumbs up. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, let us know down in the comments your favorite bet uh, for this week at the Road of Road America uh, uh, Quick Trip 250. Uh, Brian and I will be back on Saturday. Well, we record Saturday. It'll be in your feed Sunday morning before the race. Uh, Brian has a pair. Oh, okay. Well, he's back. Good. I thought we lost you again to frozen oblivion. Uh, <laughs> Brian, before we lose you again, let's give the people what they want. What is your best bet for the quick trip two fifty at road America? Well, you talked about it, and you said um, over at iFantasy Race, he was rated as the fourth best in terms of like overall speed ranking at these road courses last year, and that's Tyler Reddick. So getting him to top 10 at minus 115 is going to be my best bet right now, and I'm going all in on this. I'm going five units. Woo! That is a spicy meatball. Uh, sorry if I just blew out your eardrum, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I think that's I think that's I think that's spicy. I like it a lot. Um, I like where your head's at. 
Um, and I might have to, I'm gonna have to tail that. Um, I am going to go with Mr. Consistency, Mr. Kurt Busch, top 10. If you're giving me even money, Kurt, Kurt Busch, top 10, I will take that. I put three units on it. Um, so just to recap, Kyle Busch and Daniel Suarez are my outrights, Austin Dillon and Kurt Busch, top tens. And then I have, uh, Suarez over Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch over Ross Chastain, and our show bet for the week will be Alex Bowman for me and Chase Briscoe for Brian. Brian, tell the people what's on your card as of right now. Yeah, so we got Ross Chastain at eight and a half to one. Uh, Chase Briscoe at 30 to one are my two outrights here. And then Briscoe to top 10. The aforementioned Tyler Reddick, best bet to top 10. And then my two driver matchups are the show bet of Chase Briscoe over Alex Bowman for me and Ross Chastain over Kyle Larson at even money. Love it. Um, thanks for watching. Like I mentioned, we'll be back in your feed Sunday morning. Tell your friends if they like betting or they like NASCAR or they like some combination of the two. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. We'll talk to you guys next time.